Hello, how's it going? It's been a while, currently busy editing another QTC, and I'm kind of here to bore you with something else that kind of happened on Facebook, yet I want to brighten it up with a bit of a realization at the same time. Run with me, it's a tad bit hectic, yet I'll try to make it clear. Now, uh, I still talk about what's happening with GG. I still talk about what's happening with uh, Shirtstorm and a couple of other events, including Ferguson on Facebook. And it is quite interesting to see the back and forths and people actually discussing. Uh, when it came to the Shirtstorm debacle, a somewhat a relatively acquaintance of mine, um, ex-coworker, uh, we kind of got into a scuffle. Because eventually, when it comes to the shirt storm thing, long story short, this scientist who was interviewed part of a team that was sending a rocket to a comet for scientific scientific researches, uh, basically wore a shirt made by a friend of his. She drew scantily clad women with heavy metal type of guns. You know, it was a heavy metal type of shirt, all right, by a female friend of his, which is also a feminist, ironically. Um, after the interview, there was a huge backlash because of the shirt, and he was, I still, I'll honestly say the guy was bullied into an apology, a tearful apology, on his best day. Now, I personally do not approve of what happened, um, admittingly, his bosses should have said, okay, well, you know, the shirt, we, we gotta change it before the interview, but... Aside from that, I did not see any offense. It's a fucked up overkill shirt, quite heavy metal, and his artist friend of his kind of makes me jealous because she has a massive amount of skills that I wish I had to make a shirt like that. And I despise, I honestly despise the backlash that the guy received. Straight up bullied into an apology. So... In a Facebook discussion with that ex-colleague of mine, we we kind of went at each other to a certain degree. Um, I was constantly saying that, well, there is no actual aggression with a simple shirt. It wasn't a shirt saying, fuck women, or it wasn't a shirt showing a woman being raped, or, you know, anything worse like that, or tortured. No, those were some... Heavy metal gun wielding women. It's a small shirt during an interview. He, the the wear of the shirt wasn't actually a misogynist. No, he wasn't saying squat against women or whatever. He was just wearing a shirt made by a friend of his and decided that, okay, this is a fine day. I'm going to have an interview. I might as well show off the shirt made by a good friend of mine. And then the response I've received made me go, um, you guys remember Dark Phoenix in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, level 5, I can't control it, um, Oni Akuma would be another good reference, um, Super Saiyan 4 would be another great reference, where the response I've received was a Cartman-style mental gymnastic to say, oh, well, it was still a, a microaggression. And at that point, because, you know, we've been going back and forth for a couple of hours, not directly or not cons constantly, but still uh, spurred throughout the day. And that reply just got me so angry. Because again, this is like some Eric Cartman style of mental gymnastic to try and prove yourself right. I kind of went into a typing beatdown while staying quite, uh, not, you know, not going into insults directly, but just going, okay, enough with the bullshit. You are trying to prove yourself as right as a Westboro Baptist Church picketing, uh, let's say, a homosexual suicide and saying that, yeah, yeah, in the Bible, accept everyone, but not them. That's exactly the same way. Fuck you and that kind of mentality. Get back on earth. And 
that that ended our friendship, and I can, I can, I can honestly say that kind of friendship. Fuck that. And again, after that moment, you know, because the basic, the person basically says, that's it. Uh, we can no longer be friends. We can no longer discuss. You are misogynist. Oh! Oh! Oh, you didn't! You didn't! Oh, oh, burst mode! Oh! Oh, the adamantium rage! Why? Let me tell you a small thing. It's because throughout this entire thing, me and a couple of people were trying to tackle on this issue with logic. Logic such as, if the person is not saying anything against women, and the shirt is not advocating anything bad on women, then there is no aggression. That is, that's logic, right? If I'm wearing a shirt that is saying, fuck all Mexican, that, that's an aggression. If I am wearing a shirt that has beautiful uh, Hispanic ladies with marachas, then there's no real aggression. You know, it's just artistically pleasing. Yet, when you're going to say microaggression, and then you're being called out on that, and when you do not seem to understand logical procedure, and instead you rather call the person a misogynist, a sexist, a racist, then this is where the switch gets flipped off, the table gets thrown away, and people do have the right to call you out on your asinine logic. Oh, oh, if your, your logic is, you know, fuck it, you're a misogynist. No, 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 fuck you. You insignificant little piece of shit. You are the type of person that will just cry out in the street for anything. Then get called out and then still cry out. You lack fucking common sense. But, but throughout this moment of pure blistering rage, I kind of... Something poked up, and this is where the whole revelation part comes in. At that moment, I did realize that I was about to be anti, um, anti-feminist. I was about to cross that border. Yet, yet, during our arguments, I did bring up that an actual feminist was calling out the third generation feminists out, you know, she was calling them out, and there, you know, there was this, um, this super punch out narcissist prince moment, where it's like, oh, wait, where it's like, oh, oh, this is how you generate extremists, one bad experience, can generate an extremist kind of mentality. I I was always calling out extremists because, you know, in their little world, it's only black and white. It's my way or the highway, and you're on the black if you don't agree with me. And now I kind of see how extremists can be created from one bad experience. Now, for my ex-colleague... I do not know what history this person had. I do not know what could have happened in the office as well. Uh, back when that person was working far away. I don't know. But I can only estimate that something fucked that person up. Something was done so that this person would think in such a way which would throw out logic just like when that person insulted me and of course I shouldn't have took it that you know that much but you know after a long day of conversation and trying to get some some discussion going or logic across that just wow water tipped away and in that like small let's say 21 to 
10 to 20 minutes, I was about to go full-blown anti-feminist. Yet, again, certain feminists are calling that behavior out. And guess what? I, I can see the borders. I can see extremists on many sides. It's like that time, uh, student protest back in Montreal, two years ago. I fucking met up with some extremists that were in their mindset, yeah, fuck the establishment, break things. And it's like, no, no, there's like at least 200 people behind us that do not want you to break shit. Yeah, well, we'll become your shield. Well, we don't need a shield if you don't start conflict, you moron. And of course, that fucker went away. Another example would be the looters in the Ferguson protests. Extremist dickwads that think, fuck the establishment, fuck Caucasian people, we just want to wreck shit. No, that's not how you get shit done. Shit is not black and white. And, I, you know, again, drawing back to the Facebook argument, I was this close to just going... All right, guns are out. No, no, whoa, whoa. Let's get back to the to the cool-headed mentality and revise what I've been talking about previously as that in any movement and associations, there will be extremists. And most of the time, these extremists will be born out of a shitty event. And I can see that now. Hell, even read a, read up a few documentaries on terrorist extremists, and there are many backstories, common, you know, similar to what's been in, to uh, what I'm talking about. Backstories where shit bomb dropped on my house. I have no fucking idea who did it. Oh shit, some family members are dead as well. I'm gonna go off to fight whoever dropped that bomb. Fuck these people. Uh, hell. As a, as a youngling, I was harassed by fellow African Americans. You know, uh, you can call them the ghetto African Americans. Not, you know, I'm not going to generalize. But due to that harassment, for a long time in my life, I kept away from those kind of circles. I kept away from African Americans in general. Yet, through time... I kind of saw that, no, you can't just generalize an entire uh, ethnicity or group of people. That doesn't make fucking sense. And the same thing goes when it comes to feminists, social justice warriors, gamer gators, and hell, even going up to politics. It's not black and white. There are extremists out there, and they are the people fucking your organization up, fucking up with your prime meeting, meeting or meeting, sorry, I'm a bit of a call, but yes, that kind of people, they are the fucktards who are spawning off more extremists by giving shit experience to people, frankly, okay, to wrap this up, they're extremists, all right, these kind of people they can hardly be reasoned with. They are stuck in this mindset. And it's way too fucking bad because it sucks to have a bad experience, alright? It really does. Yet if you're going to let it corrode your life and blind your vision, then you are no better than the person that set you in that path. It is very difficult to remember that. And just passing near that border, I, I kind of now have to just constantly remember that experience and be quite a lot more cool-headed. One of the main decisions I took is, you know what? Fuck Facebook arguments or discussions. Fuck this typing shit. Here's what I'm going to do. Whenever I encounter these kind of extremists, all right, and even through Skype calls, Google Hangouts, if that doesn't pan out, and I'm seeing a blockade, then I'm going to take some little notes, 
and draw a comic. Why should I need to give myself this head-inducing cancer of anger? Because basically when you're trying to argue logic with a person that doesn't seem to want to understand logic and goes through that mental gymnastic Cartman style, then you get angry, right? It's logical. You just get fucking angry because this person just is a brick wall. So, fuck that brick wall. Time to parody it. Maybe true parody. Something. Anything could get true people. And, hey, I get to keep my head, not lose my voice, and, I don't know, make a lot more people laugh. At the same time, I'm going to lose more Facebook friends, but couldn't care less. Frankly, at this point, if you're a brick wall, and logic just doesn't sink true, and you're seeing things in absolutes, black and white, my way or the highway, then... I don't want to be your friend. Fuck that. Anyway, I'm out. Expect some funny comics coming up soon. After some commissions, of course. Later, guys.